Okay, everyone. So this is how I redid, remotored the uh, the uh, animation. Uh, so this was the original cover. It may look familiar if you've already tried to open up yours. So what I did was I replaced the mechanism that was this silicone belt with magnets in them, five magnets. The belt had snapped a couple places. I sewed it together. I don't know if you, that comes through right here and here where I sewed it. I also reinforced it with some fabric, but I decided to just give up on that mechanism. The mechanism is in this bag here. I took it all apart. The gearbox was, uh, the gear was slipping in the gearbox. It had this tooth stuff. It had the one gear. It's all greasy anyway. Um, was this one gear here that uh, worked these uh, these little nubs where the magnets go? Um, so once the once the uh, belt loses its stretchiness or cracks, then it's dependent on that other thing that kind of keeps it to pace. And so I got it fixed a couple times, and then the magnets, uh, the uh, the motor, the gear. Uh, one of the gears would not stay on the axle in the gearbox. So I decided to cut my losses and I went to this method. Very simple method. I'll show you real fast here. So all it is, this, t this is talc in here because I lubricated this with talc and I lubricate th this surface with talc. So that's what the white is. So this is a piece of masonite that was cut out just like the same size of the original base. I just trace this. And then I let into it these two motors. This, these are synchronous motors. These are 120 volt AC, however, so you have to be careful. This is not electrical code because you would have to put this in metal and put a metal box over this. But you can find these in low voltage. But I've just shown you what I did, and I'm, I'm going to put an electrical box over this. So this is the underside. These are spacers to keep the pressure off of these. These do get warm. They, they get very warm, but not warm that you can't hold them. Uh, and so you want to keep uh, you want to keep them off of a surface, and you also want to protect the cords. So the synchronous motor has a shaft with a with a hole in it, and I put a finish nail through there in order to engage with these the undersides of these discs. And these discs were just you can see they're not perfectly cut from plywood. I wasn't going to take the time to round them because you don't see it. These are popsicle sticks in here. The magnets are just let in right through. There's a piece of cardboard on the bottom to keep it from falling out. There's a piece of thin styrene on the top to act as self-lubrication against the underside of the pond here. So these magnets are just let in. They're not glued in. They can rotate and float a little bit inside here. I wanted to take a picture before I did this, uh, but I wanted to. They, I lost one. One of the magnets fell out. I had a hard time finding it. it, it it uh, wandered under the uh, appliance here, and I had a hard time finding it. And then get it, it's, they're very powerful to disconnect it from the uh, to pull it off of the uh, uh, the, the metal. So um, anyway, that's what these are. I have to remember now which side. So again, I l when you leave some air space, and then you can adjust these a little bit by pivoting them once you get them in. Uh, so synchronous motors. The, the nail has gone through the, the, the shaft here. They're lightly, uh, they're lightly fitted in with epoxy. And if I'm not mistaken, if this is the, yeah, this is the front. So this is this one is the three one. So the magnets are in here. This is the underside. This is the top side. Styrene glued on with testers, uh, glue for ABS plastic. This is the, the other one. These these can float, so it's a loose linkage, a loose forgiving linkage. Notice how they can wobble, and actually when it, when it's running, they will float up just a tiny bit. So you want that, so there's no pressure, only the pressure, the magnetism, and the pressure points are on these little pieces of, of uh, styrene, which are sort of self-lubricating against this. So one more time, the undersides they key in. Nothing's glued in. The magnets aren't glued in either. They can freely rotate. I don't know if you can hear, but you can hear them actually uh, bouncing around in there. So I'm not mistaken. I did this. Uh, I did the 
Yes, the three on this side and the two on this side. You can vary it. You can put the magnets a little closer in if you want, uh, or you can um, do like I did for the maximum distance. Uh, now, this is not doing the original uh, placement, the original path. They went in sort of a kidney shaped. Um, this was the original box. Nice, nice, nice item. Very well done figures. And uh, it was a kidney shaped. If you have this, you know what it is. So if you're buying this, no matter what good condition it's in, perfect condition, brand new, like this was mint condition, but the belt snapped. So now it can run continuously and it can be uh, pretty much, it, you can run it as long as you want. I'd recommend giving it a half hour break, running it for a half hour and then stopping it for about 10 minutes or a half hour. Certainly don't run it all day. I'm going to put this back together and come right back and show you how it looks. Okay, maybe I should show you how it looks running before the top is on. So that's it. You can see that these will float and self-balance against the top, or I should say the underside of the pond. They will balance. Okay, let me get this back together and we'll come right back. Okay, so here it is. Trying to get this angle to the camera, I'm looking sideways here. And I'll do a little better video at the end of this. So what I did was it came with these trees, which I'm going to use for the other toboggan run, because they're the same style. I didn't want them, so the trees, I just shaved down, cut them off, shaved down a little bit, and they go in there. And this is the screws are under here for how I reattached this. Originally, the screws all came up from the bottom. I reattached that way. So here it is. Get that in the thing. I'm looking sideways. So you can see it's a nice gentle pace. It's three revolutions per minute. So you you want a motor that's three revolutions per minute. And I put a little talc on here. The talc actually helps them run smoothly. And of course you can move them around however you would like. So that's that was my desire. And then I have other trees. I want to place other trees. Obviously now you can't exactly surface mount this so you'd have to build up with uh, either loose uh, snow uh, loose polyester uh, uh, stuffing or whatever else you would want to do but it's a very nice gentle motion and again the underside here are the the two, the two synchronous motors under there okay and then snoopy i i just took out the mechanism for, I took out the, the sound mechanism. I can use it separately if I wanted. The quality was bad anyway, and I do my own music. So there you go. That's how I repaired that. So if you find one on the internet for a cheap price, as long as it has this top piece and the five figures, you're good. Don't worry if the trees are missing. I like these trees, but they match the toboggan run. They don't look good here, and I'll, I'll put some other trees around. So right, I, I didn't get my Christmas displays done, all of them my little setups. I was focusing on the, um, what you see over here, I was focusing on over here these uh, animations that I did on the solenoids, which are, excuse me, not solenoids, servos, very easy to do. But this is whisper quiet, and you could run it, I've already run it today for about 45 minutes straight. As I said, the motors get a little warm to the touch. Now again, this is 100, these are house-powered motors, so you would want to put this in an electrical box. This is not electrical code. I would assume no responsibility for any issues here if you're using motors that are not low voltage. These are not low voltage motors. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, again, make a metal plate, and I'm going to put this in a metal box. These wires also are not designed to be uh, left out there. They're designed to be inside a uh, an appliance or inside a, an electrical box. These motors are microwave oven turntable motors, by the way. Two running quietly. This is bulletproof now. I have worked with these motors. I have worked with these motors on my main layout. If you notice all the different animations that I have built on re revolving uh, turntables, I use these motors. They're 110, 120 volts. They get warm. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, but you, they're really designed to be in a metal box and on a metal plate. 
So just keep that in mind. And uh, But low voltage, if you got the low voltage version of these, which I could not find in a hurry, you'd want 3 RPM low voltage. And if they are DC low voltage, you would maybe be able to uh, control the speed a little bit. But the synchronous motor works off of the cycles, the 60 cycles. Um, and uh, so that's it. So this can run a long time. It's kind of cute. And uh, I'll do a little better video of it, video of it later. But I, I really like it. I like that they don't have any bases. Uh, even though they don't have skates, they also don't have any big bases. So like it, kids, when I was growing up, a lot of kids didn't have ice skates. They just went out on the ice in their leather shoes, leather sold, well-worn shoes, I may add. So that's it. I like it a whole lot. I'm glad it's bulletproof now. These figures are extremely well done. Um, even if you can just find, if you, even if you just wanted a static display, I mean, look at Charlie Brown, for example, if I can get him. I don't know if this is going to be blurry or not. But he is so well done. And uh, because the magnets float, you can actually arrange them a little bit. You, you can control, like if you wanted them to go in you know, their forward direction, you can sort of force it a little bit. Um, but if, if they're, this is a, these are synchronous motors, so when you unplug them and start them back again, they may go in the reverse direction. But as I said, people skate all the way around all different ways. And the talc, the talc actually keeps them, you don't want to use any kind of an oil. The talc on here actually works as a little bit of a lubricant. And uh, after they run a while, the surfaces kind of get polished out a little bit. The, the talc, as you know, is a soft rock, but it's still a little, a little abrasive. So um, it helps everything even out. So there you go. Now, a company like Lionel or Lee Max, if they would come out with something like this, put it at a reasonable price, of course, they could make it so it, it's all surface mountable, um, like this was originally, they would have a winner, I think. And the, the mechanism is bulletproof. No belts, um, no belts, nothing to really, the, the bearing points, I guess a, a little bit of a grease or something could be used, but I just use talc and... Um, the styrene against styrene is sort of self-lubricating anyway. Okie dokie, folks. Hope you enjoyed that. Again, don't do this with full house power motors. You want to do this with low voltage motors. If you do it this way, you got to make this base metal, and you're going to have to put an electrical box under it and have all your connections in an electrical box. Okay, take care, everyone. So this is just an example of what I've done. Okay, you have to do it safely yourself. If you don't know how to do it safely, don't attempt it. Take care.